Hi again, everybody, and welcome to another episode of the Shop Notes Podcast, a weekly woodworking podcast where we ponder the difficult questions that are facing us as woodworkers. I'm your host, Phil Huber. Today, I'm joined by Logan Whitmer and John Doyle. And on today's episode, we're going to be talking about finishing projects, not that kind of finishing. We'll also look into uh, kind of a little year in review while looking forward. So let's get started. This episode of the Shop Notes podcast is brought to you by Woodsmith Magazine. Woodsmith Magazine has been the trusted source for all your woodworking information for over 40 years. From tips and techniques to furniture projects to shop projects, you'll find it all at Woodsmith Magazine. Subscribe today at woodsmith.com. All right, before we jump into the main topic of today's podcast, uh, I have a couple of uh, discussion questions. Maybe okay. because I've been inspired by Logan's 30 questions in your face episode. I have another one ready. Just a heads up. <laughs> like whole episode or question? <laughs> like whole episode. Wow. Yeah, uh, I know. Ooh, based I on the YouTube comments, me. based on the YouTube comments, that was a popular one. So I thought it was fun. It was fun. Okay. So my question yeah. for you is that while in most respects we want to – forget that 2020 ever happened yes is there something woodworking related about what happened in 2020 that you want to carry forward or learn or explore moving ahead yes can i start go ahead i'm going to keep all my hand plane shavings as emergency toilet paper from now on <laughs> like that was in a lesson i learned <laughs> All right. And I want to explore further and turning them into toilet paper. Just don't. Please don't use them for kindling afterwards. <laughs> that would be. Unless it's on your neighbor's bad. doorstep. Right. Yeah. There you yeah. go. No. So I think that uh, one thing I learned, or I guess I took away from this last year of woodworking, is that as I'm working more and more in my shop, I'm learning what tools I use a lot and what tools I don't use enough or that what tools I have that I don't use at all hmm. because okay. I have some of those. Um, so I think, you know, as I wrap up some stuff here in my shop uh, going into summer, I'm going to probably once again, thin some of my tools down. Yeah. Um, so what kind of, what kind of criteria would you base it on, uh, base that on, you know, like I haven't used this tool in X amount of years or months or whatever, or is it, you know, like, I just don't see myself building this kind of project. Therefore this tool accessory, whatever no longer fits. So I think that in my, thought process, or I, I think that my thought process is if I'm building X project and I need to accomplish a task. So what I'm looking at right now is my plow plane. Okay. So sure. I have the Veritas plow plane. Uh, I don't use it ever. Um, can I use it? Yeah. Oh yeah. I can, I can cut grooves with it and it's, it's a blast when I do it. But if I am building a project and I need to cut a groove, that's I'm going to the table saw or the router table. You know what I mean? Um, right. Just because generally um, as much as I like to think that my woodworking is a Zen process and I take my time and there's always a fire somewhere to get me <laughs> moving on the project. You know what I mean? Like whether it's, you know, trying to beat a deadline or mm -hmm. trying to get it to somebody before I start another project or just trying to get out of the way. Uh, so I guess looking at a process that a particular tool can do and in a building, in the building of a project, is that the tool I'm going to pick up? Right. I guess that's, that's my thought process. So uh, a couple of them I have just because I'm sitting here looking at them right now. My plot plane is one of them. Um, I have like a Stanley number 12 cabinet scraper. Um, 
uh, technically, I think that one might be a veneer scraper. I'm not sure. Um, I don't use it and I'm not a tool collector. So, um, you know, those off the top of my head, those two that are probably going to go. Yeah. Um, because I don't see myself ever utilizing them on every project. So, sure. John, how about you? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Kind of, I guess, bouncing off of what Logan said about tools, I would say the same thing kind of on materials. Um, just as far as working from home and not being able to necessarily go to the store, there was shortages of things during more of the spring and early summer is to kind of appreciate um, the scraps that I have, you know, laying around the, my shop. It's either like find a use for them, you know, do something with them or get rid of them because then they're right. just in yeah. the way. You know, that's, so. that's actually a great point because I have found okay. myself doing that this year as well. And it may be a coincidence that, you know, now that I have a sawmill, I have access to a lot of material, but like just looking at my scrap pile mm -hmm. in the garage, I'm like, Oh my God, there's so much firewood here. Just throw it in the fireplace. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, I mean, and right. it's all small random stuff that I've held onto like, Oh, Hey, that's a really, the piece of walnut has really nice crotch figure on it. So I'm going to keep a little one foot by six inch blank or piece of it. It's like, mm, no, I'm much happier when I don't have crap. Right. Right. Ignore everything behind me. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Don't turn yes. around. You're going to be really sad. As I duck my head out of the way, and you can see my scrap pile <laughs> on the shelf back there. <laughs> right. Well, I know that I did that too, as I found, because I always kept smaller pieces like that thinking, hey, this would make a great box or I could use it for, you know, drawer parts of a larger project or, you know, seeing all this potential in it. But when I had the opportunity to use a lot of that scrap because I was home in my home shop more, like you said, John, and had more time, didn't mean that I really wanted to use it because... It's almost like keeping it for those purposes almost requires you to build that project. And that might not be the project I really want to make, you know? So like on the one hand, I used some of it just because it's like, I'm tired of this kicking around and I'm just not going to play with it anymore or it's out, you know, I'll send it up to my sister who has a fireplace and, and, and be done with it. So yeah, it's it's almost kind of have like a stressor having it around because you, you come across it every so often. It's like, oh, yeah, I was going to do that project. It's not something I really want to do. But, you know, I have this, you know, these scraps that I've been keeping around. So once you get rid of them, then, you know, that's kind of off the table and you can do the things that you want to do rather than yeah you feel obligated to right. do. Because so. I found that, you know, looking over the past year, in addition to wanting to keep kind of a neater shop just because it's a lot easier to use my time when it's feeling cleaner or more organized or you know doesn't feel as much like a storage way station necessarily um you know and for people who followed us on our social media accounts you know i've been dabbling in carving a little bit more and i'd really like to do that more often and um you know, it's not like I'm going to start making a bunch of carved Santas or gnomes or something like that, but it is kind of fun to have something that's, I don't know, a different path from what you quote unquote normally would do for woodworking. You know, whether it's, you know, like I said, for me, it's carving because it's different from the tables and dressers and, you know, case piece kind of stuff that I normally do. So anyway, that was just something that I had was, was thinking about just cause, you know, I was looking back at my, um, you know, I keep a shop notebook in my, in my shop, oddly enough, and carry it around with me. It's a little leather covered notebook that I do like preliminary drawings or sketches or, and I've kept a list of the projects that I've built, um, basically since I've been at Woodsmith, so almost 18, 19 years of projects. So it's kind of fun to go back and look at them and 
and think of where my priorities have changed or interests <clears throat> in, in woodworking have changed and being able to, to see how that plays out from year to year. Sure. So anyway, the main topic of today's podcast that I thought we'd get into is uh, something that you brought up um, Logan, a couple of days ago. And for those people who don't already know this, if you're watching on the YouTubes or listening, is that uh, Logan, John, and I are somewhat codependent in that we work together pretty well as mm -hmm. a team, but we also are texting each other off hours and on weekends and stuff like that. And this past weekend, Logan, weird, <clears throat> it's already weird. It was weird, like, months you guys are and months ago. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he sent something out this weekend about how, not necessarily a resolution, but, you know, like, just wanting to finish projects this year. Yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, it's, yeah, because I think, I know I'm, uh, I'm probably the, well, no. John's the worst at this. I'm probably the second worst. <laughs> I'm Starting worst. a project and then never yeah. finishing it. Like John had talked at one point about how he has a cabinet in his what basement that's been there for a long time. Right? Yeah, exactly. Uh, so 13 I... <laughs> years maybe. And it's been in various stages exactly. of so, so maybe maybe so. in a few years I'll be tied with John because you know, John's a little older than I am, not much, but Anyways, we're, we're all bad at starting projects and then just not finishing them, right? It's like you get super excited about something. It's like, yeah, this is going to be great. I'm going to build this. And then something happens and I don't, it doesn't mm -hmm. necessarily have to be something like with the project. It could just be, you know, right. oh crap, I, I had to skip a day in the shop one day and then you just lose momentum. And I think that's the, the worst part is it. Part of it is uh, you lose momentum on a project and it's hard to get it started up again. Right. Okay. Oh yeah. So, so over this weekend, yeah, last Friday, I had a day in the photo studio um, for uh, the current issue we're working on. And I also shot some stuff um, for an upcoming issue. Spoiler alert: What's standing on my uh, assembly table behind me? Um, and I, I had a few, well, probably a year ago, over a year ago, I had been working on. Um, some elm slabs that i was going to use for a desktop okay uh, again another project that got started and never got finished uh but some of those slabs i was filling with some black epoxy and i had cured uh, or not cured i had over mixed my epoxy so i ended up with you know maybe a, uh, of a of a paint like plastic paint container i maybe ended up with four or five inches of epoxy that cured in the bottom of it and it was tinted black so I'm like, you know, I'm not going to throw this black epoxy turning blank away, of course, because I hoard all the material that was before my resolution to not <laughs> hoard material. And so I, I kind of had started turning it on the lathe. Not really. I just really wanted to see how it turned. Uh, you know, this was probably a year and a half, two years ago. And it's been sitting in my cabinet in our workshop ever since. So during my photo day on Friday, one of the things I am uh, doing an article about this time is or this issue is uh, carbide turning tools. Uh, the tools I have are from Easy Wood Tools. Um, and one of the appeals to me as a turner that uses traditional cutting tools, uh, one of the appeals to carbide tools is that they work really well on resins. So this is such a minor thing. I just finished that stupid little resin bowl that I was working on. Like, and it's just, <laughs> and I say this, like it's a big deal because my whole idea on this little resin bowl was it, it was going to become a uh, shaving soap dish. And every morning that I get out of the shower, I look and I see my shaving soap sitting in this little like ceramic. I don't know. It was like a little dove shaped soap dish from my great grandma's house. Right? Like, and it's just like, I should every morning I would think I should finish that little resin bowl to, uh, put my soap in and I finally did. And it happened to coincide with a, you know, photo day. So it kind of was a kick in the shorts to get it going, but I feel like 
it's something that I'm trying to do. You know, not only did I finish that, I did the table that my wife has been asking me for for seven years. Um, I feel like there's something else I recently finished that was like, oh, I started that a long time ago. Um, but you know, I have parts cut for another project in our, um, it's actually in our back room in our video studio, uh, a pair of nightstands that I had started a year ago, you know, that just I kind of lost momentum on. So I guess that was where this came up is what do you guys, what happens that makes you stop on a project? I see a shiny <laughs> object and <laughs> get distracted. Yeah, no, that's, I mean, that's what it is. It's like you just lose momentum. And then it's like, if it's something you don't have a hard deadline on or need right away, it's really hard to go back to it. Cause it's like, we're all pretty busy with work and family life that it's, there's always something else that could be, that needs to be done or, you know, it's easy to get distracted and, and do something else. So I feel like when I've been like house projects, it's easy to get them started. It's easy to, to, you know, start demolishing something and get it started. But if there's not, you know, a hard deadline, it's hard to get it done. I think the times that, you know, I've gotten things done, it's like, oh, we have a birthday party at our house coming up yeah. and this needs to be cleaned up or, you know, something like that. And so for me, it's like, I don't have anything until my son graduates in a couple of years. <laughs> so yeah, a couple so, of years to finish them. <laughs> you know, I'll have everything done. Yeah. By the time graduation comes around. So I don't know. And I always like it's, and we've mentioned this before that, you know, we've talked about moving and stuff. And I think if that were like a serious, you know, thing, it was like, oh, we're going to move. I would finish all the projects and, and get them done. But it's easier to start on kids' playhouses and, and other things and, and get yeah. distracted that way. So it's, all, it's always right. fun so starting the next like, thing. Oh, I think there's a that's overlooked is just how much of a thrill there is in starting something. I think there's the combination of seeing the end goal in your mind's eye plus the potential of what's going on. And then, you know, I think we're also naturally curious enough so that in the middle of a project, you know, one of the other projects around here or that somebody else is working on kind of sparks another idea. And it's like, oh, it'd be cool to do blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden there you are running off on another, on another tangent. Yeah. Right. And the, and the farther you get into the project, eventually you hit the parts that aren't as fun, like boring, like you're sand, just sanding or just finishing. And it's, it's more fun to like make those bigger right. strides early in a project. And you get to the point where it's just like little strides, little, you don't see as big a changes and it just gets to be tedious. So then you kind of lose interest and, and lose momentum. And, but if you can get it back, it's always yeah. fun finishing them too. So yeah, you know, it I feels mean, like you really check off a list, something off a list then. Yeah. I mean, I have a, probably a list of four, four or five projects that I have started and are just kind of hanging in there in various stages of completion. Right. Now, two of them I'm sitting here looking at. One is the hardware cart that I ended up building a seg <laughs> one for the TV show. I mean, I got red bins in it. I got those acromil bins in there. Uh, the drawers aren't finished. I mean, the drawers are in there and they have stuff in them. They don't have false fronts on them. And I never did complete little pull out trays. So right now I just got random hardware organizers stacked in there. And <laughs> I also started a tool cabinet. God, probably it had to have been right after I started at Woodsmiths, probably three, yeah. four years ago. Um, and it, the lowercase is sitting right behind my computer and it's just, it, it has crap stacked on it. And it's like, and I guess what had happened with that was one of those, like, I was really excited to to start it. It's like, yeah, I'm going to build this really cool big tool cabinet. It has drawers for storage. It has doors, shelves in there. I can swap out the shelves for some plain tills and a saw till and stuff. And I'm like, oh, this is going to be great. But then I started thinking about it. I'm like, I don't know if that's actually the the final storage solution I want for my shop. <laughs> so I was like, well, <laughs> crap. And to be fair, I hate building drawers. 
I mean, okay. drawers are as easy or as complex as you want them to be, right? right. Like, you know, butt joints and dowels uh, or butt joints and screws. Easy, right? Like, they're not hard to build. It's just I hate building them. They're just repetitive, you know? So it's just sitting there and it's waiting for me to decide what to do with it. Like, do I finish it? I mean, do I, do I finish it, use it for a couple of years, see how I want to change it? Or do I want to change up my uh, hand tool cabinet to be more of like a wall mounted thing? I don't know. So that's kind of on my low priority list right now. Um, I think it's easier to jump into something like, what I have in our video studio, which is those floating nightstands. Um, I have all the parts. The parts are all glued together. They're surfaced. They're cut to size. I just have to dovetail the dang thing together and they're done. I mean, for the most part, I do have to build two drawers. So maybe that'll be my second stop on this road trip. Um, <laughs> but, you know, uh, and then just other random stuff like behind my head is two of the, our birdhouses we did on the TV show. Oh, yeah. Last season, you know, I have them glued up. I just gotta, just gotta sand them and slap a top and bottom on them, and they're done. Um, so, I I do feel when I maybe that's what I'm doing. Maybe it's me stopping a project, and then when I do decide to pick it up again, I feel really good about myself. So maybe that's what it is. It's like, yeah, look at me. I finished that project that I started two years ago. Go me, you know. Maybe that's what it is. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, I think another hurdle as far as losing momentum for me is um, just kind of designing while I'm going and you get, you know, caught up on the details of like, do I want to do this or do I want to do that or, you know, or, you know, change thing as you go. So it's if you don't have a hard deadline, it's hard to to make those decisions, because once you go one route, then you're kind of stuck, whereas it's easy to kind of waffle back and forth about yeah. the details yeah. and and I found that with the, you know, it was probably a year ago that I started in earnest on that stereo cabinet re refurbish that I've been working on. And because I got it all sanded down and put stain and finish on the main case, and it looks great. And the part that I'm stuck at now are the doors, which was the old speaker grill from the, it was an old radio cabinet. Sure. And I cut those down the middle because I want to make turn them into doors and I'm trying to figure out how to make the doors thicker, but then where the speaker cloth was, I was going to put in some plexiglass panels and, and I, I'm kind of chasing my tail on how do I edge these doors so that they don't look too wide, that I can find a way to capture that plexiglass panel that I can size the doors correctly so that they open cleanly. So I didn't really think that through entirely. And now that's kind of my stopping point is that I just don't want to hose it up and I'm not quite sure of where I want to go with it. So, uh, so that's a little, that's a little frustrating. I think also, you know, something that I realize in woodworking is, you know, when I start a project, it's perfect. You know, everything yeah. about it is going to turn out right. I'm going to finally showcase my true woodsmithy street cred on being able to, you know, have this thing look ideal. And it's like, as soon as you start breaking down boards or sizing pieces or cutting joinery, then it's like, well, it still can be pretty good. Well, I think I can fix that after the fact, you know, so that's like these series of compromises, so to speak. Not that I turn out junk, but, you know, your yeah. your mind's eye perfection is a lot more discerning than real life. Yeah. And I think that, you know, there's there's always some of that. You know what I mean? Like, has anybody ever turned out something that they wouldn't change a single thing on? Right. I don't think so. You know what I mean? Like, like I love my <clears throat> dining room table I built. Love it. But as soon as I went to, I mean, it was like my legs, my aprons, those all turned out great. But as soon as I started going through and picking my stock for my top, 
I realized that that walnut that I remember cutting on the sawmill that was really clear when I cut it, it wasn't that clear when I started digging through it. <laughs> so all of a sudden I had to, and no, I mean, nobody cares. You know, my right. wife did not care that there was, you know, n not checks, but like pith streaks or, or, and they're very small and I was able to avoid a lot of them. But in my mind, that was the biggest hurdle is like tell myself, okay, this isn't going to be the completely clear, you know, 90 by 44 top that you wanted. Right. That's fine. You know, yeah. like I, I myself was the biggest hurdle in that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We're, yeah. we're our own worst enemy on projects a lot yeah. of times. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think I've ever looked back at a project I did 10 years ago and thought that's the best that I could do or. There's always something that's kind of like a regret or something I could have done better. Yeah. Or... But conversely, there's been some projects that I fought with when they were built. And now when I see them having had that distance of time that allows for a certain amount of graceful forgetfulness, mm -hmm. it's like dang, that project turned out really nice. Yeah, I, I, was, I agree. I was reminded of that by um, a few Christmas projects that I've made and given to family members. And uh, both sides of my family live an extended amount of time away. So I don't get to see them or the projects that I've made, except maybe twice a year. So it was kind of fun this year at Christmas being able to see some of those projects that I've built past Christmases and be like, wow, I really like that. That would turned out really nice, you know, and just yeah. seeing, you know, being able to give yourself grace. Yeah. Well, and it, it, there's, there is some instances and you, you, both of us, all three of us tend to build things that we don't necessarily have plans for, right? Like sure. you're, you're designing as you go. Okay. I mean, there's a lot of that. Like, yeah, I mean, and I, I try to flesh out my plans as much as I can, either on pencil and paper in my shop notebook, which is sitting back there, or by just completely thinking it through for weeks before I start, right? Right. But there's always that little bit, and they're not always, sometimes there's a little bit of, holy crap, that worked, you know? <laughs> and like... Like, you're like, I mean, in the middle of doing something, you're like, there ain't no way that this is going to work, but I'm going to try it. And then you're like, oh, holy crap, it it actually worked. Um, and same thing, you know, when I built my, the bed my wife and I have, that sleigh bed, I, the the curved panel, I was like, this is going to be stupid. Like, this isn't going to work. And I was like, holy, oh, and it actually turned out pretty, pretty dang well. And same thing, you know, every day I walk in my bedroom, I'm like, yeah. Yeah, it worked, you know, like there's some things that change about it, but overall it works great. Yeah. So I, I don't know if you guys have the same problem that I have. There is occasions on a project where you, I don't want to say you skimp on something, but you are putting so much into a project and you get within sight of the end that you kind of, I don't want to say haphazardly do something, but you do something that it's like, I could have thought that out a little bit better. Oh yeah. Um, you know, like uh, in particular, I'm just, you know, on this bed subject, I, I knew when I was going into it that it, it's a King bed. So it's fairly wide. So those slats underneath, I don't have a, a box spring. So the slats underneath need some form of support in the middle. So in my head, I'm thinking, okay, I'm going to do a cross member that runs from footboard to headboard. Uh, I'll put in some tea nuts and uh, I'll turn a couple small walnut legs to go under there, right? No, just just maybe like a center support, maybe two center supports, something like that. Um, there is currently a one and a half inch oak dowel wedged in between the carpet and that board <laughs> under there. And it's like, I know it's there. And is it fine? Yeah, it works fine. But it's like, I, I put so much into that bed. I should just turn a stupid walnut leg to go in there. Yeah. Finish it out how I imagined, you know, uh, it's like a dining room table. Do you put as much care on the underside of the top as you do on the actual top? 
but should you? I, I guess is the question. No, <laughs> Phil says no. He's like, no, screw, screw that. <laughs> I'm not doing that. I do. Do you? I do it. <laughs> okay. Yeah. I like uh, when I was redoing my kitchen, I like refinished, like fixed all the holes that were behind all the cabinets and textured the walls and painted <laughs> them and ran all the flooring underneath the cabinets and then like set the cabinets. Well, see, I don't have a problem with setting, putting flooring underneath the cabinet. Yeah, you know. That's yes. We're not animals, yeah. John. Right. Because you're just taking right. care for the next person who has to put in a new dishwasher or range or a refrigerator or something like that. But but I would expect nothing less from you, John, than to have yeah. textured behind the cabinet. Yes. And, you know and fill all the holes. Yep. And those cabinets are held on with 14, na- 14 screws each and right. instruction adhesive. Right. Yeah. They're like... They're yeah, like that the screw head, and the and... tips of the screws are just about ready to break through the siding on the outside of the house. Exactly. Oh, so yeah. I mean, they're like uh, again, dining room table. I just finished. I I didn't I didn't take the bottom surface of the tabletop to the same level of finish as the top. Yeah, I know it. Does it matter? Not one bit. Because there's no if somebody's laying on my floor looking at the bottom side of the table, they're in no uh, condition to be worrying about. Right. <laughs> from the table. <laughs> yeah, their own They've got their own problems. <laughs> but there is some, uh, there is some fun things I like to do with something like that, you know, oh, yeah. uh, where I, I left a lot of joint or of um, four plane marks under there, you know, like, could I have sanded them out without any, hassle yeah but i think it's kind of fun to have a little bit of hand plane texture under there where i leveled some joints yeah um i think that's kind of fun um yeah and i purposefully left that i don't know how we got on this sub on this topic (laughs) from finishing (laughs) projects but you know well but i think it's all plays into how you do it though because i mean you know a lot of times my projects are either something i have invented in my head or, you know, based off of something else, or I start with plans, you know, from our magazine, mostly or others. Um, But, you know, I'm a fan of jazz music. And I feel like in building a project, even if you have plans, there is a certain amount of conversation or dialogue that you have with the project or the materials or something where you're going to improvise or riff off of what's going on. And that's going to change, change the project fundamentally, you know? Yeah, for sure. So I think that all plays, all plays together. Now, here's a question that I have, like we want to, you know, ideally, you know, if you start a project, finish it, that's going to be our collective goal for 2021. However, let's take that just on the flip side. When is it, or is it okay to bail on something? Well, if you ask Becky, it's not okay to bail the day before you're supposed to film on a project. <laughs> Just can't get it done. I have to have a bunch of other stuff yeah. to do before I leave. No, so I think it's okay if if you're yeah. waiting for a reason that is going to make the project better, okay? So if you're waiting on, um, you know, you don't, you just don't have the appropriate stock or material on hand to finish it. Okay. To put it on pause. I don't know if we put a limitation on that length of time, um, until you reasonably get it. Um, I also think that it is okay to pause on a project. And I, I've done this. I I know I've done this for sure. Consciously, uh, pause on a project when I start working with stock that I realize is not acclimated correctly. Okay. So if I start working on some stock, glue up a panel, and then in three or four days, I see that panel starting to move a lot. I'll just stop. Um, and it might require remaking that panel or ripping that panel apart and re-gluing it up and reflattening it. Which is what you had to do that- on your nightstands. It, it is actually, yeah, that's, that's exactly what I had to do, which is why I stopped them and have waited 18 months to pick <laughs> them back up. No, uh, Smart. I did. I had, I had, uh, two of those panels. I actually had to re-glue because yeah, I mean, it was air dried stock and I 
again, just was so excited to start the project that I brought them in, surfaced them, glued them up right away. I know better than that. Let them acclimate. Um, yeah. So I think those are two instances where I think it is okay to, not that it's not, mm-hmm. not okay to put a project on hold. We always do it, but. Well, what about like just giving up on it altogether? Yeah. Like it no. gets sent to the burn pile or yeah. dumpster or well, pawned off on yeah. an unsuspecting colleague or something like that. <laughs> I think like, for instance, Logan was talking about building that that tool cabinet he started several years ago and he's wanted to build it for all these tools that he had and like if you get to the point it's like well i have sold all those tools i don't need them anymore and i still have this and it's like you just don't have any or your needs have changed and you just don't need to finish it like either totally bail and like you said give it the parts away for somebody else to do something with or change paths and make a pantry out of it or a side table or, or you know chest of drawers for for someplace something else so otherwise it's it's one of those things that just collects dust and piles in your shop and creates more of a obstacle to get the other things well and done i think i think it's, um so. on lines of that john is our needs i think are constantly changing so like i mean for example i i i consciously have not finished this rolling hardware cabinet because now that I'm starting to piece my shop, like flesh it out a little bit better, I don't know that that actually has a place in my shop. Mm. So I'm kind of not going to put much effort into it or any effort into it because I don't think that's going to be my hardware solution in my shop. Right. You know, quite frankly, I just don't think I'm going to use it. I think the floor space is better used for other things. So, you know, uh, the same thing with building a project. If you're in the middle of building a king bed and then all of a sudden you decide you're moving and you don't have room for a king bed anymore, sure, bail on it, you know? Yeah. But I think if if you are building a project and you're at the point where you're going to bail on it because it's too hard, not okay. You're going to learn something. <laughs> about it, you know, like, like suck yeah. it up. <laughs> Toughen up, buckle up, and get it done. You know you're gonna learn something from mm-hmm. it. Like I, I wouldn't ever, I won't ever give up on a project just because it's too hard. Either I'm gonna run it into the ground trying, or I'm gonna succeed at it, or I'm just gonna learn something. Yeah, I think there's also um, I, yeah, I think there's something valuably to be learned in finishing it out. You know, because I've had projects mm-hmm. where I've thought about bailing on it because of mistakes or, like you said, needs have changed or something like that. But I think yeah. that's just an opportunity to just run it through, finish it up, do the best that you can, and then, you know, maybe find someone you can give it to. You know, like yeah. you know, like we've said before, our flaws are much more noticeable to us than they would be to anybody else. and custom furniture is custom furniture and there's a lot of people that would love to have it in our life and being able to to share that and and move that on because i've had a few projects where um you know maybe it's my own malfunction or something but it's just like i really need to build this for whatever Mm -hmm. reason i have no use for it i have no place for it but i just need to build it and get it out and learn the skill or have the joy in doing it. And then I can pass that along to somebody else and, and feel a lot better about it. Yeah. So I'm just going to wait on the Facebook messages to come through. I'm like, Hey, I'll take your hardware cabinet. (laughs) (laughs) Wait for them. Yeah. But well, and I think, you know, we've, you know, like we said before is, uh, or related to what we said before is, you know, like we're not the same woodworker that we were, five years ago, two years ago, 10 years ago. So, you know, our skills have changed or our desires and what we want from the craft have changed too. So there's no, there's no shame in passing something along. And we, we say this knowing full well that 
we probably do more woodworking than most people do because of what we do for a living. Um, yeah. But yeah, I I would agree with you. If if you told me three years ago that I'd be trying to move stuff in my shop to make room for a wildly overpriced huge lathe, I would tell you you're nuts. <laughs> in my mind, turning is the same type of thing as intarsia artwork is. You know, it's like. Yeah, but where are you gonna do with it? But you know what? I really enjoy it. So yeah, I'm gonna try to There you go. Try to make room. So All right, so true confession time. What do you have any projects currently that are hanging around that you wanna go on record for finishing? That that yeah. you have, no, have that you finished have, that need to be finished. Is that what you said? Oh, yeah. Oh, they have You're making a commitment. Let's be very clear. Get the corporate lawyers all appeased <laughs> and say, "This is you stating that you're going to finish it." Yeah. I've made within an unbreakable hour. YouTube. I'm afraid to say anything. With, yes. The 40 what, people month? who watch this. Yeah, I'm afraid to say anything specific because it's probably all the same things that I said last year <laughs> at this time. I'm gonna so, lose twenty pounds. I'm gonna yeah. That's, yeah, that's why. That's yeah. why I never make resolutions because yeah. it's the same thing I would have said the year before, and it didn't happen then. It ain't gonna happen now. But, there you go. No, yeah. I will say that my nightstands will be done within one month. Oh, oh, you're gonna put a time frame on it too. I'm oh, blow. yeah, dang, dang it. right, I am. I know. Yeah, so you have to now too. <sighs> I mean. I just gotta dovetail them. Just right. gotta dovetail them and dovetail them in the drawer. Yeah. Well, them. yeah, I do have that. I have a wireless charger that I am recessing into the top too. Okay. So that I I actually saw that the other day. Sit. I ran up to my desk in our office. Like I've visited that desk like three times within the last year. Um, <laughs> and I was like, oh hey, there's the wireless charger I bought, and I tore it apart because I want to use the like. Part. I don't want the plastic housing. I want to bury it in wood. So, okay. Yeah. So within a month, by well, let's just say, what are we? Middle of January. Yeah. February's next month. Let's say by February twentieth, I'm going there. I don't know. February is a short <laughs> month. It's gonna be tough. Phil's jotting the note down. To I'm writing it down because I'm going to put it yep. in the show notes page. Uh, oh, shoot. Let's go with this. Yeah. Might even oh, walk over to the shop Logan. and take photos of your parts sitting there. Oh, right, no. I'll say Maybe I have that tomorrow. radio cabinet project that is ridiculously close to being finished, and I just need to pull the trigger on it. So I will match. I will see your February 20th with my radio cabinet. Okay. All right. This is like the this is like the fellowship of the projects. <laughs> you don't walk into Mordor with no hands. Uh, but you can walk into the capital. Right. Uh, yeah. Uh. Speaking of uh, walking in, if if uh, people are watching on YouTube, you can see that I'm broadcasting from the room of requirement here. Also known as our photo studio room prop room. Did you? Yeah. Did you guys hear halfway through like some teenagers come in looking for? Um, I did. I did. Yes. I the door slam. Yeah, they slammed. Right. The, they slammed the door on the way out. They started. A, they started a uh, small fire and left. So you know, that's just. So do you have anything, John? You got any projects you want to? I don't know. I, I have lots of things, but I just in life <laughs> in general, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow or the next day. It's just constant craziness. So I'm like afraid to. Okay. Put don't a put a time on it. You got a project though. So, yeah. I don't know. I have lots. You know, hey, John, you could, you could say, uh, no, something oh, that no, I have done. No. I'm going to do it on the TV show. <laughs> what are we filming next week? Right. Oh, I don't know. What are we filming next week? Yeah, we're doing the desk. Yeah. Yeah. Home yeah. office suite. 
the week, week after. Is that next week? Yeah. yeah, that is next week. Yeah, week after. Okay, that's the thing too. It's like I always kind of focus on the things that I haven't gotten done. But then the other day, somebody was at our house and Claire was showing them around and is like, "Oh yeah, I, I built that. Pro-. You know, all the stuff that I did get done that I don't really think about." And then it's like. Oh yeah, I built like tons of projects for the TV show that, you know, yep. over fourteen seasons. Right. Like those all got so done. Kind of stuff. So it's yeah. like stuff happens. Yeah. Yeah. But, yeah, because for those of you who don't so, know, I don't know what I'll... actually happens on the TV show is that uh, Mr. John Doyle here creates most of the props and does a lot of the initial legwork for getting all of our stunt props and project parts ready for the show so that Logan, Chris, and I actually look like real woodworkers when we're on That's TV. true. So, he does all, you say he does yeah. most legwork. He does all the legwork. He does all the legwork. His, there are processes that we show. Us. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Except for Chris. It's just like, give him a tree and get out of the way. <laughs> just uh, step back, find the radius. Find the have you seen that? Have you seen the guy on a yep. bandsaw? Jeez. So I, I also have another project. I have a gentleman's dresser that we built for yeah, you do. season 12, right? 13? It wasn't yeah. 13. We just wrapped 14, right? It was 11, wasn't 11 it? 11 or 12. 12. No, we wrapped up. I don't know. We just when did, did season When did Logan 14. start? Was okay, 12? so... All right, 12? I'm going to look it up while we argue about it. I think this. it was 12. Okay. 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 I'm pretty sure it was 12. Yeah. See, I don't like this podcast two. because now I'm thinking of all these projects that I actually have started. Yeah. yeah. Like just the other day, my yeah. wife and I were sitting in our office. I did a bunch of built-ins for our office. I never did any of the drawers or doors for them. So they all look so <laughs> janky. <laughs> I take that back. I did four four or five drawers for them and have installed them, but I don't put false fronts on them. So it looks even more janky. You have a problem like, with false fronts, apparently. Uh, yeah, I guess. Okay. Man. I mean, if I'm anyway, so- we have a, one of the, the gentleman's dresser that we started for, it was episode tw- or season 12. Okay. Um, the project as we were, cause we had the finished one that we showed in the magazine and then the one that we built on the show, which got, 90% of the way done. I think it essentially just needs final sanding, uh, just some final fitting of like the drawer and a couple of, of the inside drawers and then finish whatever I used to do for the finish on it. And it's been sitting in my workshop acclimating, I'll say, for yes. probably two years now. So that seven percent kiln dried white oak is now fourteen percent. Right. So <laughs> it just needs to get out of my shop because it's about the size of a small refrigerator, and it would be a great piece for in our house. I have debated where exactly it needs to go in our house, but it just needs to get done. So I would like to have that one done too. I hesitate to put a time frame on it because it's in my shop, so I can't really apply finish to it except for some of the removable parts. And it's just too oxy to try and move like downstairs in my house to finish. I have a truck and we have a finishing room. That's true. Let's do this. So maybe sometime by spring, I would like to have that one done and complete. Yeah. You know, I was going to say, maybe maybe the reason I've started to enjoy turning so much is that I can knock a project out, like, quickly. But that's not the case now that I think about it, because a lot of stuff I'm doing is green. So you start it, and then you have to stop it. You have to right. let it dry yeah. the rest of the way. Right. Well, there's, like, two finish lines for that, though. There's, like, the green turning stage. You're done. Yeah. Now you have to wait for it to turn into another project, a dry bowl before you can finish it again. It's the, it's the triathlon. Right. You have multiple segments. Yeah. yeah do the, the run first, then mm-hmm. swim, then the bike. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> I even say that. It's what <laughs> swim, bike, and run. It looks like this body's ever done a triathlon. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, but I have I do have dry bowl blanks here that have been... They've been dry for a couple months. I just haven't finished turning them yet. So, 
you know, mm-hmm. same thing. Mm-hmm. There you go. Some yeah. easy pickings right yeah. there to get some. Or just stuff take them out to Jimmy Clues, have him finish them, and then trade them. Oh, yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Got a lot of bowls sitting here, ready to go. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, all right. While we wrap this up, any projects that you're currently working on? John? All of them. All of them. No. No, kind of like what I said last week is just kind of getting geared up here at the beginning of the year to um, get shooting again the for video edition and TV show stuff right now. So getting a lot okay. of stuff started. That's, That's what right. I'm good at. You're like the so, you're like a starting pitcher for a baseball team. You just you get it going in the right, right job and then you come in quality start. You know, put quality your start in. six, five, six, seven innings mm-hmm. and bring in the closer. Um, you know, that was the other thing that I actually had started. Uh, I was working on those knives, right? So those are ones that I had done the first three like three years ago, and now I'm finishing them. Um so I, I basically rough sanded those handles. I need to um, bring them into the shop and get a little fine tuning done with a, uh, a file and rasp and stuff, uh, kind of profile the handles a little bit. Okay. Um, but I did, I'm gearing up to head down to Vegas to spend a week weekend turning with um, Jimmy clues. So that'll be fun. I, I ran out last night and picked up, um, I had some ash that I am bringing him Um from um, a place here in central Iowa called Bear Creek Hardwoods. They have a, a mill out in Adel, and they also have a large kiln. So it was kind of cool. I uh, took them some hardwood uh, right before, or took them some ash right before Thanksgiving, and they threw it in their kiln, and I just picked it up uh, last night. And it was three inches thick, 14 inches wide and 10 foot long. And there's eight pieces there. So, uh, it's some, it's some chunky stuff. Um, but for like, I, I cut it, I think I cut it the night before I brought it out to him. So it was sopping wet. I mean, it was, you couldn't have gotten any wetter unless the tree fell into their kiln and the, uh, it dried to like 14, 13, 14% in those two months, which I thought was phenomenal Mm. for being three inches thick. So dried really well, no, no, very few checks in it. So, so yeah, kind of gearing up, going to load up the truck, um, probably tomorrow night with the rest of that wood that I'm going to be bringing down there and then hit the road on Wednesday. So it'll be fun. So by the time this airs, I'll be hanging out in sunny 70 degree Las Vegas suckers. (laughs) (laughs) All right. Well, I have a project that I'm almost done with that was inspired by my brother-in-law, Jason, who is an inveterate tinkerer. Okay. Um, so I made it's some red, I think a red pine that I had gotten for those who are watching on YouTube that I have and I'm making for my car is a little phone holder that I can put on the hook. I put a little picture frame hook that I custom bent on the backside to clip it on my one of the part of the dash on my car so that I can have my phone in a little bit more of an accessible place because my car was made before phones were a thing. So the most convenient place for my phone to be is falling out of my pocket underneath the seat. So yeah. I've broken the phone doing that. Yeah. So So anyway, it was just kind of a fun little project. Do a little carving and sculpting on it. And I just have a little shaping left to do on it and figure out a finish. Probably just some wax. Um, Mm -hmm. Then be able to have my phone in a little bit more of an accessible location for for what I do. Yeah. Now I feel like, God, now I feel like I have to bring those parts with me to Vegas and work on nightstands while I'm there. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well you'll have stops like along the way right you're just gonna be That's overnight right. somewhere and you'll be just in some hotel you can just yeah. dust your parts while you're there get some woodworking done in grand junction colorado there you go 
Yep, I think that's where I'm stopping. I'm gonna try to bring some wood back. I don't know where I'm gonna find it. Okay. So it's got to be something. Yeah, I mean, it's perfectly fine to cut a tree down from Yellowstone, right? Oh yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. Right. Yeah. Just don't get yeah. caught. So there you are. Line. If uh, you're a woodworker in the Las Vegas area, Logan is gonna be in your neck of the woods this weekend. Hook him up with something cool. Yeah, some olive wood, preferably. Right. Yeah, desert iron wood or. Yes. So, yeah. All right, let's read. I'm gonna have. A, I have a comment from last week's uh, podcast where we talked about dust collection, uh, which I thought was ideal. Mister Walter Riggs says, "Sat through an hour long talk about the ins and outs of dust collection and enjoyed it." I guess I'm a real woodworker. That's right. There you go. And then uh, Jeff Kowalski, it's humbling to know that the three of you use simple tools that I have in my two-car garage. There you go. Just a reminder that the Shop Notes podcast is available wherever you get your podcasts and listen to them. In addition, you can also watch the three of our talking heads bobble along as we do this, as well as show off some of the things that we're talking about on our YouTube channel. Uh, we also have a show notes page at woodsmith.com slash podcast, where we'd like to post uh, some of the photos and links to some of the things that we're talking about as well. Thanks for listening. We appreciate any questions, comments, or smart remarks that you may have. You can put them on our YouTube page or send them to us, woodsmith at woodsmith.com. Otherwise, we'll see you again next week. Thanks for listening to the Shop Notes podcast. Bye, everybody. This episode of Shop Notes Podcast is brought to you by Woodsmith Plans. You'll find nearly a thousand plans covering everything that you'd want to build. From furniture projects to gift projects, kitchen accessories, workshop projects and jigs and more. Find your next project at woodsmithplans.com.